Welcome to Escape This Podcast, a show that's a mix between tabletop role-playing and escape room puzzles. This is the fourth room of season 14, and we have a guest game master on. Every episode, we play through an audio escape room, usually one that Danny creates, but this... I'm happy to still take credit. Okay, Danny made this one. So when you get things wrong later, it'll be extra embarrassing. You wrote these puzzles, you dummy. Uh, This room was written by a guest, and we have... A returning guest, but a first-time guest game master from Aurelius Whitlock's Murder Museum and one of our co-writers on uh, Rise of the Golden Idol. Welcome back, Marcus Richardson. Hello. So happy to be here. We're excited to have you. So this is sort of an interesting situation because we've had you on the show playing through an escape room. You and uh, Nathan played through the ice cream escape room from whichever season that was. Right. (laughs) Um, and while this is the first time we're going to play through one of your escape rooms, it is not the first time we've played through your puzzles. Right. Uh, so we were actually recently guests on Aurelius Whitlock's Murder Museum. Danny and I solved a murder mystery that you and Nathan ran for us. So we have played games that you've run, just not on this podcast. (laughs) Right, and you very generously called it kind of a, a cross between solve this murder and escape this podcast. I mean, I th- I stand by it. Even going, you know, every time I listen, I think, yeah, this is like if you took escape this podcast and solve this murder, and you squished them together, mm. which I think makes it much more difficult. Like every time someone suggests like bringing a guest on for solve this murder, I panic. I just go, you don't know how we run these episodes and what the recordings sound like. (laughs) Bringing an extra person into that would be a chaotic mess. And yet the way that you managed to do it for your show was very smooth. It worked. Well, you could invite us because we're used to the same kind of chaotic mess. That is true. And you also came into our show and like broke a lot of things, basically. (laughs) So I just love to return the favor. Yeah, that is that is how we do it. Um, (laughs) What a delight, though. You guys came in and like were I I don't know. I just loved the 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 confidence you guys have. That's Uh, that's the trick. Ninety percent of solving a murder is confidence. Um, I agree. That's (laughs) that's true in the real world too. I'm sure. Um, and then we also mentioned that we are all working on Rise of the Golden Idol, which, which I have announced on this show. So if you haven't paid attention, we're writing for a, a, a cool indie puzzle game. Uh, so we've also played scenarios that you've written for that. So we've played your That's sort true. of uh, versions of those mysteries and, and, and scenarios. And uh, they're kind of like a mix between Escape This Podcast and Solve This Murder. <laughs> <laughs> Again, what a great compliment. It's funny. I feel like we're... We're getting to know each other through all our different kinds of like work intimately. Mm. So I don't really know you guys as people, but I feel like right. I have a real good feel <laughs> yeah, exactly. for for what kind of content you make. A little you know? bit. Yeah. It's like that. Uh, so we're excited to finally have you on to play and play through one of like an escape room that you've written. Uh, well, actually, in, it's in, one in that Danny, Danny, Danny oh, wrote. Danny wrote. Sorry, it. Danny oh, wrote, and he's yeah. going to cheat the whole way through. <laughs> Um, I like it as a bit, but I'm worried the audience will be confused. We have <laughs> we have so many people when you play either solve this murder or escape this podcast asking, so you know the solutions going in, right? And I don't it's, like wild to That's assume just that. Of my confidence. <laughs> we've had you on before, so we've asked this before. But every time we have guests on, we ask the same two questions. So we're, I suppose we're looking more for updates than full background. This is an escape room show. What is your escape room experience? I don't think I have many updates. I'm not sure if I've actually been to an escape room in several months, but I definitely enjoy them. I love puzzles in a physical space. There's mm. something that feels so cool about like I... seeing things actually click together. And I mean, this is a great approximation of it, but it, it feels cool to, you know, spatially be aware of all these puzzles around you. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I've said before, just simple things that are barely puzzles, like plug this big thing into this socket into the wall. And And just because you are actually doing it, Mm. it makes me feel like I'm on Survivor. Exactly. Uh, And then the other element of this show is it's escape rooms mixed with a sort of tabletop role-playing style. Uh, Have you had any updates or interesting things in a tabletop role-playing context? I can't remember if I mentioned this last time, but I was a part of a mini campaign of D&D in Ravenloft in that setting. And I played an animated scarecrow 
with serious <laughs> existential dread because like his entire <laughs> village was actually animated scarecrows and they're all disanimated and he's just alone it was like oh. pretty heavy topics but kind of cathartic and also very <laughs> silly so oh lovely um well lovely i think in that case we're probably good to just get right into it let's do this i'm excited do we now i think we've had a slight not a spoiler but we've been primed slightly for the theme of this room mm. so we know that do, do we want to tell the audience do we want to give a little sure. primer of what's going to happen yeah, absolutely this is going oh, to be set. You want me to? That, well, oh, no, no, now, you got there it. was enough of a pause that I've started. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, this is one I believe is set in a voiceover artist studio or a voiceover, voiceover studio. studio. Are the only words I have written on my page right now. So that should be fun, but it does imply that there'll be silly voices to do. Oh, and Danny, oh. I'm saying now you have to do all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Because I knew what I was getting in yeah. for when I wrote this thing. If pe people who know me, if there's one thing that I don't like doing, it's silly voices. Yeah, I gosh, hate I hate them. those. Um, all right, well, in that case, uh, I, th I think we're good to go. I think it's uh, over, over to you. you. Whisk us away. Awesome. Yeah, we'll see how I do without my better half, better podcast host half. <laughs> do, do you feel lonely? Do you feel outnumbered? Uh, just a little. <laughs> we we talked about maybe him being here until we realized that there really was nothing for him to do besides uh, sit there. And that now doesn't he knows translate how I feel well to a podcast. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's Ooh. do it. You and RJ step into Voice Over and Over Again, a voice recording studio in a dilapidated area of the city. You hadn't heard from RJ in years, but today, out of the blue... He invited you to record a few lines for an upcoming short film he's been casting for. Sure, you didn't get along in high school, but that was a long time ago. You don't remember exactly what you used to fight about anyways. Plus, you're pretty strapped for cash, and you've wanted to break into the voice acting industry for years. RJ talks to you in his distinctly raspy voice. It's truly a miracle he ended up in the voiceover industry at all. So excited to have you here. Y you really do have a great voice. Has anyone told you you should make a podcast? <laughs> it's terrifying. I've, I've, read, I've already written his name down. It's Raspy Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I can't believe you figured out that puzzle. That's that's well, that goes half half of this. Yeah, that's the, that's the spoiler of the room. Who's Raspy Jim? Who could it be? It's not RJ. His name's RJ. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh my God! I've heard those letters before. <laughs> uh -oh. Okay, back to, back to narration. <laughs> you enter the live room where there's a microphone stand set up, but RJ leads you to a small booth in the corner of the room labeled Isolation Booth. You step inside and RJ closes the door behind you. You're a bit claustrophobic in here, but this shouldn't take too long. There's a set of headphones hanging around the mic, which you put on. RJ talks to you through the headphones. Okay, your lines are in there on the desk. You'll hear three beeps, and then we'll be recording. Hang tight. You wait for the three beeps. And wait. And wait. Hello? You call out. No response. Maybe the mic isn't connected. You take the headphones off and try the door. It won't budge. That's when the lights go out. Ah, rude. Oh, no. It's dark. Should we, do we start? Do we go? Yep. Okay, oh, so we're in a little isolation booth, and we've got a, a, a microphone. Is it a standing microphone or one of those microphones that hangs from the ceiling? From what you saw moments ago, it's a microphone mounted to the wall via an adjustable metal boom arm. Gotcha. All right, we've got a microphone. Uh, we've got headphones. I should. We've got a desk, apparently. Yep, supposedly. With our lines on it. And we have a door, but the door... Is locked. I mean, if I know anything about lights, fumbling towards the door and, well, first off attempting to open it and then attempting to fumble for extra switches tends to be how it goes. Yeah, let's fumble towards the door. Fumble towards door. Yeah, you can feel the door handle and a deadbolt lock above it and both have keyholes. And actually, you do feel a light switch right next to the door. We f switch solved it. it. Solved. Yeah, we solved it. Nothing but... happens. Oh, solved. Damn. Damn. All right. 
as you're fumbling around the door, you also accidentally kick over a waste bin in the corner. Ooh. A bin. I see where this is going. We need to find a screwdriver and dismantle that light switch and figure out what's going on that way. Maybe. Now, <sighs> if we've uh, knocked the bin over, is it bright enough that it would be worth like digging through the bin to see if there's papers in it? Or was it just like, if we found something, what would be the point until the lights are on? Right now, you are fumbling and feeling, so you can definitely investigate what's in the bin, mm. but you can't read anything right now, for sure. Let's investigate. Maybe there's a key in the bin. Worth a shot. Uh, you reach in, your hand touches something sticky and wet. It's no. several wads of chewed gum. You did that, not me. <laughs> there's also a small plastic knob. It's about the size and shape of, like, a chapstick lid. Huh. Okay. To my knowledge, we were not looking for that, but that feels... That's a pocketable. Dimmer switchy. Yeah. That's what that feels like to me. Oh, is the light, does the light have a dimmer switch that's broken off if we feel underneath the on-off switch? Nope, it's just a singular switch. <sighs> it well, a it's good still idea. what it feels like. That's so true. it might go on something else, but Could it's just go definitely... on some audio equipment it, Okay, look, a volume knob also makes perfect sense. It does. Perhaps more sense. Um, all right, well, I think we just keep looking. What do you want to look at next? Apparently nothing. We can't see anything. What do you want to feel for next? I'd like to take off the headphones to see if they've been muffling our ah, sound. They've been a blindfold the whole time. They've just <laughs> fallen in front of our eyes. I, I just like to you know, rest them on my shoulders. I'm not going to throw them across the room so I never find them again. Just to make sure that like, we're not missing someone knocking at us or something. Sure. Uh, you take off the headphones. You don't hear anything. You also don't hear anything in the headphones themselves as well. Is there anything with them to like flick around? Are there any buttons on them or, or, or anything we can investigate further? Or they're just, these are headphones, don't worry about it. Uh, you feel at the headphones, there's no switches or dials or anything, but you can follow the cord to see where it's plugged into. Ooh. Oh yeah, let's do that. Cables. Let's follow the cord. You follow the cord and it leads you to the small desk. On the desk, you feel a paper, a cup with a few pencils, and a small metal box that the headphones are plugged into. Oh, okay. Did you say the cup had pencils in it? That's right. All right. Also, the entire room is covered in foam paneling, which you've been feeling across as you go around. Yeah. Can I draw said foam paneling? Please don't. Just draw one. It's pretty easy. They have an interesting rigid texture, which you assume exactly. is to reduce echoes. Exactly. Uh, you say that, but now I assume it's a secret puzzle. It'll be Darn. like... Triangle, triangle, blank, blank, triangle, blank, blank, triangle, triangle, blank, triangle, blank. And we're like, ooh, it's a code. Rookie mistake. I told you what you assumed, and I was wrong. Exactly. <laughs> I assume it's a puzzle. Uh, all right. Well, again, lights don't work. Sound ain't working. It feels like... I will say, on this desk, I know that we found that the, this, the metal box is where that we were yeah. plugged into. Is there more detail in that That's metal box? That's what I would be oh, okay, going so I to I thought you next. were moving on. I apologize. I was going to say, there are no lights going on, but through our headphones, look, we did hear those three beeps at the start. It wasn't completely beep, dead beep, beep. immediately. Actually, you never heard any beeps. We didn't hear any beeps? It was dead you heard RJ speak to you, but you waited for beeps that never came. Oh, okay. Sorry. I wrote down three beeps and then, yep, clearly <sighs> forgot about that. Ah, three beeps. All right. In that case, yeah. It is worth checking out this metal box. Let's check out the metal box. Things are plugged in. Maybe there are other things plugged in. The microphone might be plugged into it as well. And it might have a big button that says, hey, Make work. who turned off the lights? Feels like the headphones are plugged into this box. There's a circular indentation on the front yeah, of it. Yeah, there is. We put the circle, the, the knob in. Chapstick lid. First puzzle solved. It fits like a glove. We Very turn it. glove. And you turn it. And you can hear something in the headphones now. If you'd like to play VOHP in the folder. VOHP. Okay, great. Okay. I got that. Does this visual representation work for you? Not even slightly. What have you done? Okay. You've done a. I need you to describe this for me and the listener. Three... What did you write? You've done three little apostrophes. Yeah, three little apostrophes, because that's, like, if you hit a drum in a comic book, you would see those lines coming off it. Okay. And, and then, then the next one is line. flippy, so that's obviously it's a wiggly line. <laughs> All right. And, and then, then a downward arrow? Oh, no, then, then another... Yeah, then another drum beat. Okay. And then and two then, downward arrows. Meow, meow. 
general, so they're downward arrows, obviously. Okay, you know what? I agree. And I agree. I'm, I'm, again. I absolutely love that you took something from this audio medium on a podcast and you converted it into a visual medium just to take it out of that space. Sounds are useless. You heard it here exactly. first. Exactly. No one likes sounds. 99% of communication is non oral. That's it. That's okay. why podcasts are the worst. I don't know what that means, but it's why sure. nobody should listen to a podcast. <laughs> um, it's all about body language. And drawings of sound effects. Okay. Hey, why do you think we never find cave recordings? Huh? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's oh true. Oh, my gosh. You're onto something. All right. Well, so we have a series of sounds, but I don't really have an action associated with those sounds to do if I was going to follow along with these instructional sounds. No, not even slightly at this stage. So maybe this is for later or at least until we find something that can make these sounds. Yeah. Anything else on that metal box? The, any other buttons oh, yeah, or anything? Other than the We're dial. Good. Okay. Okay. Nothing of interest. All That's right. good. That's good. I do question, are these the lines that RJ wanted us to record? Because that's weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just need you to do, just record this. This is the sound of someone falling down the stairs. <laughs> exactly. All right. So pencils and paper, probably not going to be super helpful for us right at this moment. I wouldn't think so. Are we just going to go full lie down on the floor and roll around feeling everything under the table or all around the walls? Oh, yeah, see if there's anything else the that we've missed. There's also the, the microphone, that's, which we never really looked at. I guess that's true. But I want to roll around on the floor. Yeah, okay, let's have a look under the table. You roll around on the floor. I don't know if you want me to say that some gum gets into your hair. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't okay, have then hair. That doesn't happen. There's one of the foam padding that feels a little loose down here. Mm -hmm. uh, but besides that... Rip okay. it off! Can we rip it off? Well, that's just insensitive, but okay. You rip it off, there's nothing behind this one. Exciting. Okay, but there might be behind others. I'm not could ripping the, off all of them. Could the, um, if we feel a piece of foam padding, you talked about them having like a, a, a pattern on them that feels like it was for noise reduction to the untrained and foolish eye. Like ours? Like ours. We have no eyes at the moment, well, like, and we are untrained. Is Can we get an idea of... What one, if we take an arbitrary tile and just feel across it, what, what do we feel? What, what, is there a sequence of different shapes? What's going on? So this is not a puzzle or a red herring. I just wanted it to be kind of an informative okay, detail. Cool. Exactly. <laughs> we have several of these foam pads. It's perfectly innocent. I don't know how you could suspect anything was up. Danny, we have most things that appear in escape rooms and they're usually innocent. <laughs> Incidentally, can I say my first impression of this RJ? We all come from murder mystery backgrounds. We haven't seen this guy in years. I don't believe this is the real Raspy Jim. Ah. But okay, so it feels like you wanted to check out the microphone next? Yeah, it's uh, literally, in my eyes, the last thing in the room. <laughs> Let's do it. The microphone is about the size and shape of a can of baked beans or maybe a jar of Vegemite. You realize you're pretty hungry. <laughs> And it is attached to an aforementioned microphone stand, adjustable metal boom arm, a la the one in front of me or in front of Bill at this very moment. Okay. Um, if I tap on it or anything, does anything come through my headphones? Do oh, they yeah. feel like they've got any connection to each other? No, you don't hear anything as you tap That's on it. Unfortunate. I was hoping that we could like unscrew the microphone a little bit or move its extendable arm around and, and hear, hear things. things. That's a great idea. And um, yet. What if instead I say, uh, hey, uh, Ajay, just letting you know the lights are out. I was wondering if you could turn those back on. I can't read my lines. If you could just quickly turn the lights on for me. Thanks, We're getting mate. no sound, no feedback from you. We're so let's just you. assume that you can hear us. Yeah. Just on the basis that you can hear us, could you turn the lights on, please, RJ? No response. Damn it! RJ! <laughs> okay. Danny, what do you want to do? It seems like we have... I guess I have to touch some pencils. Or some sticky gum. I don't want to touch sticky gum right now. Can we put it... We can use a pencil to get some sticky gum. I mean, yes, that's true. We can. But Still right now... I don't know why. Let's just touch the pencils. All right, what's going on with the pencils? They are pencils. There are no distinguishing features on these pencils to you. Mm, intriguing. Is intriguing. the paper written in Braille and therefore readable in the dark? It is not, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm. So we can't, we need key, one or two keys to open the door. The key had two locks. It but did. 
n- like our our door has two locks. The same key opens them. Um, <laughs> Don't so I, tell people that it's one or two. It's a deadbolt, but often they're opened by the same <laughs> key as the as the main you door. You say often. I don't know if that's true. I think it's pretty often true. But so we need keys for the door. There is sticky wet gum in the bin. There is a plastic knob which we've used to get audio to our ears, but all we can hear is whoop 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 or whatever it is. Um, good. That's pretty good. But I haven't yet seen a thing. Are there any other buttons on that metal box that we no, could mess with? I felt around for it and didn't notice anything Do else. Do we have the capacity pr- to produce sounds in that order right now? Do we have something that goes ksh in the room with us? Sure, knocking over a bin probably does that. But the flippity flop and the yeah, they surprise me a little. Yeah, they don't feel so like they we exist in the, in the real world. I take the piece of paper... And I'm not going to let go of it. I take it to the door and I like slip it under and back through a couple of times to communicate. If anyone's out there, they'll see this happening. There is no specific reaction. You feel so isolated in this isolation booth and you feel like no one can hear you. You don't know if that's true or not. Okay, we, we found one panel that's loose. We're out. We're we feeling wanna, isolated. We've, we've touched everything else. I think it's time to see if all the panels are loose and rip them all off until one of them is a light switch. And, yeah, if we're being sound deadened, let's undeaden. Yeah. No one can hear us. All right, let's get rid of all the paneling. You methodically rip them one by one, and behind the microphone, as you lift one or two of these panels behind it, is a small hole that a little bit of green light shines through. Hey, that's Ooh. something. Green light. Uh, is it enough? Is this the sort of light that's enough to read by? It is not. But as you get closer to the hole, you realize that this is just a hole in the side of the booth that one could maybe take a, a microphone cable and run through the hole. I see. But you realize there's no cable here. In hmm. fact, the microphone doesn't have any cable attached to it. Oh, it's just a can of beans. <laughs> you can also see through the hole that there's another desk on the other side, outside of this booth. And as you squint, you can see in the low lighting, there is a key on that desk out there. <gasps> oh, so we need like a stick and some gum. Does it look like the key would fit through the hole if dragged by a gum? The key would fit through the hole. Your nice, hand nice, would nice, not nice, fit nice. through this hole. That's okay. Would a pencil? Is it is it a pencil's distance in the way? If a key would, I hope a pencil would. It is further, you, you try reaching it with a pencil and it does not reach Come far on. enough. Survivor, well, Billy. Here's what we do. We play Survivor. What, you tie all the pencils together? You use, Yeah, you gum all the pencils together into one long poking device and hope that it doesn't bend too much so you can reach the key. Can I tell you my other solution? <laughs> no. I was going to say we unplug our headphones, Ridiculous. which have a cord. What, and lasso it through? We just hope gum that on the you end, get the right and way? We, and then we... Push it through and, and, and whip it and try and get it to touch. Pencil stick. All right. Stick. I'm on Survivor. You're using gum to stick pencils to other pencils and then putting gum on the end of the pencil to get the key and then drag it back through the hole. Yes. All right. I may lose some pencils in the attempt. <laughs> both of those solutions are, are ones that the last person who ran this room did, and both of them don't work as well as you think they would <laughs> and do not get you the key. <laughs> All but, right. Uh, first, you try the, this pencil stick. and. Oh, you don't it, even need to explain why that doesn't work. It's a stick of pencils held <laughs> yeah. together by chewing gum. Well, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, unfortunately, the the cord is not quite... I mean, you are you just flip it around out there, and yeah. it is not the accuracy that so you would hope for. I, I see what you're I, saying. We need to work together no. and take the pencil <laughs> Danny, can we please move on to a correct <laughs> idea? Um... Do we have I will say that the, the hole is about the size of like a Pringles can, so you could like reach your hand, but then you'd immediately get stuck. It's it, like it's slightly larger than I expected. Okay. Do we have anything longer of that is that sort of a, a length, a distance? Uh, what sort of distance are we talking? I need to get a good visual for this. How 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 long a stretch do we need here? A foot, maybe a That's foot or two huge. feet. Huge. Can the microphone itself turn around and move it? Oh, it's on a boom arm. Yeah. So we could like take the microphone off its boom arm and use the arm itself. Would that work? As like a little claw? You can claw? certainly try. I take the remaining gum. We need the gum. The gum's an integral. Otherwise, it just touches the key. <laughs> it just says, hey, hey, key. 
and we gum up one end of a boom mic and see if we can turn it around and stretch it that way. Okay, what do you do with the mic when you do this? We open up the can of beans for <laughs> energy. We, can we, yeah, what is the, is the mic? Is well, it definitely you, a microphone? Uh, as you take it off the boom stand, which it is definitely not connected to anything, yeah. uh, you pull it a little bit and go ahead and play sound effect VO underscore P. What? <gasps> it goes ah. boo. It goes boo. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> While you realize that sound, you also successfully can use this boom arm to reach out of the hole, stick the key. You have a key now. Okay. okay. We have a key and we have a thing that goes. All right. So now we have to go around pulling things again and or moving things around and seeing what else we can get to make noises. Well, we shake the key. <laughs> what? Does it go? Tsh? It does not do that. No. <laughs> Um, okay. Can I just take the waste paper basket and treat it like a drum? You, it's, it's a nice drum. It doesn't make any sound you would recognize. That's unfortunate. That's fine. Can we use the key to open the door? Well, or does it only open half the door? It fits in the deadbolt and you unlock it. The handle is still locked. And as you turn the deadbolt, it goes... <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. Damn. Describe okay. what... And what, what exactly did you do with this microphone head? Oh, the microphone head. It's a head. bop it. Hold on, wait. We we took oh, it off and no. it like shook a little. Can we do? Can we like tap it? Go ahead and play vo underscore b. <laughs> okay, so when you oh, tap it, it no, goes. Oh no, I didn't think of this. And when you shake it, it goes. What was that? Shake it. That's when you pull it. Oh, when yeah. you pull it. And okay, can we shake it? Can or we rattle twist it? it? Or twist it? Go ahead and play vo t. Okay, so that it's a bop twisty. it. Twisty. Oh boy. So. Can I go? So hold on. Oh, they're, they're labeled as P, T, and B, which is uh, pull, twist, and bop. Um, oh, right. Bop, not tap. That makes bop sense. It's bop it. Uh, and so what do we need? We need to go. I'm going to try and remember. It's. Uh, <laughs> is that right? Not quite. Not quite. Not What's quite. the last one? It's another wiggly. Okay, hold on. So it's. Is that right? Bop, twist, bop, pull, pull, twist. And as you do that, the microphone breaks into two pieces. It was a capsule, and you hear a key plink to the ground. Ah, oh, brilliant. I'm very glad I uploaded these to the, uh, to the <laughs> sound effect. Yeah, you're bar. taking full advantage um, of it. Okay, so we've got a second key. That's always good. We've done the room! Sweet! Uh, we open the, the door. Fingers crossed. You open the door and you step back into the live room. The room is also very dimly lit. Oh. It's only illuminated by the green light from the exit sign over the exterior door in the northeast corner of the room. All right. It's a relatively small room, but you feel a lot less claustrophobic in here. The mic you saw earlier is still set up in the middle of the room. The north wall has some more sound treatment panels. And the south wall has a door and a large glass window into the control room. You assume um, it, it's not see-through glass. Uh-huh. Um, is there anything else of note in this room? Where did, which direction did we come from? Uh, you came from the corner. I can't remember which corner I said. I don't believe so you just... said a corner. I made it the northwest corner. Sure. Was this microphone a standing or a hanging or... What this kind? is a mic on a mic stand, Lovely. and as you approach it, this one feels more like an actual microphone. I bought uh, it. It has a cable. <laughs> there, nothing happens this time. Uh, so it, it, it seems like a, a real microphone. It has a cable that links it to the wall. Should we, on the assumption that things are actually perfectly fine, and this is all just a big misunderstanding, knock on the window slash door into the control room, be like, hey, RJ, sorry, technical difficulties. Give it a shot. You knock on the control room door and a voice over the, there's a loudspeaker in this room, apparently, mm -hmm. because you hear RJ's voice speak to you and it says, I'm not letting you out until you read your line. <laughs> it's dark. Then turn on the lights. I tried, idiot. <sighs> they don't work. I don't like this guy. 
Uh, by the control room door, there is some sort of electric sign above the door, but it's unlit. And there's okay. also a light switch by the door. Oh, do you want to turn the lights on? Does that one work? This one doesn't turn on the main lights, but the sign immediately above the control room door now says in red letters, O-N-A. O-N-A. Does it look like that's all of the space for letters, or does it look like there's supposed to be more going on there? It looks like there's supposed to be more. Yes. I wondered. Uh, Because you think it's going to have a G-E-R at the end, and we're going to have to fire ancient siege weaponry at people. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That that was my suspicion. I mean, it's usually the solution to most of these rooms. People never figure it out, but if you have an onager, you can do whatever you want. (laughs) I've never even looked up to see if that's how it's pronounced. No, I think I never pronounced it on a J until today. I don't think I've ever said it with a J. I think I've always had a G. All right. Google break. No, it's fine. Let's move on with our lives. Because my uh, assumption uh, is we're in a recording studio. Don't they usually say like on air or something? Oh, Perhaps. you're right. So we might be missing IR. Maybe. Which things should we look at first? Not too many things. Well, is the light here better for... Reading. Actually reading things? It is still too dim. Mm. Okay, still too dim. So we can't just go and get the, the papers from the other room. Bring we probably should and, do and that anyway. Around. But, yeah. Yeah, we'll pocket the papers. Read. You pocket the papers. Pocket the papers. And tell me about this northeast exit sign. You go to the door that has exit above it. Mm. Of course, you need to try the door. But, Naturally. of course, it's locked. It is not locked with any like key or anything like that. There's there's a little panel next to it, but there are no buttons on the panel. So you're not entirely sure what is locking this door. Hermetically sealed. Makes sense. So you said there's a panel but with no buttons? Right. But on the other side of the door, there is another light switch. We turn it on. Ah, you turned it on. Anything happen? Uh, well, I mean, what, what are you doing? You, do you look in anywhere specific? No, no, the main lights don't turn on. Okay, main lights don't turn on. Does it now say IR at the end of, or, or GER at the end of Onager? <laughs> you look over and that same sign says O A I R. Yeah. O Air. It's the start of my favorite uh, romantic poem. So does that, that feels patterny. And like it would, if we turn it back off, does it go back to O N A? Yes. Intriguing. If we go so back to we the... turn this one on, yeah, but the other on. one off. Yeah, so we leave this one on, so it says O-Air, and then we head back to the other one and turn it off. What does it say now? Now it says N-I-R. So one is O-N-A, one plus two is O-A-I-R, two only is, what was it, N? N-I-R. I-R. It's a bit of an associated activation puzzle. So all together, that's all the letters in some combination or another. Yeah. It's interesting because one, and if we turn them all off, it just says nothing, right? That's right. Intriguing. What do with that information? Or is it not about the combination, but about like a sequencing sort of a thing? I will say that if you turn on two before three, it has the same effect. Okay. So yeah. So if we, if we get it all back to, to nothing put on the exit sign one, and then the thing, it still says O-Air. Cool. Uh, So what do we do with this? Do you think it's about the letters that we are seeing? The letters we're not seeing? You've got something. Well, what is the other, the other light switch didn't do anything when we were in the isolation booth. Oh. What happens? you want to go back in there? Let's let's clear everything off. Let's turn off exit. Let's turn off um, this area here Mm -hmm. and go out, turn the one in the isolation booth and come out and have a look at the sign. The sign says O-A. Okay. Okay, so now we've got to do a, Do we need to do all the combinations include, involving that one as well now? Uh, what, yeah, what if we just have all, th- all three of them on? All three of them on, the thing says IR. What? Okay. Okay. So let's, let's, let's talk this through. Oh, right? man, this is so many combinations. I've, I haven't been writing this down I've in a very clear down. manner. I've labeled them one, two, three, where one is the oh. control room, two is the exit sign, okay. three is the isolation. Okay. Room, right? One gives us O-N-A, mm-hmm. if it's on by itself. Two gives us N-I-R. Three gives us O-A, right? Okay. One and two together 
So the ONA plus the NIR, the N seem to cancel out and we get O-A-I-R. Interesting. Because they both had N. So they're both influencing N, so it goes on and off. They cancel out. But the OA and the IR are separate. Gotcha. When we did all three of them, it was just IR because the OA cancelled out the OA from on air from, and then the ends were cancelled out and only the IRs were left. So it looks yeah. like if we do two and three, we would get on air because the O and A would be from, num- from switch number three. The N and the I and the R would be from switch number two. Nothing's cancelled out. Everything's fine. You have done that in a much clearer way than I did in my notes. It looks great. Can we do, and I believe you. Can we do switches two and three, which is the exit sign, the isolation booth together, and have switch one off? The sign says on air and the lights flip on. Hey, hey good nice. job. Good note taking. I'm glad we probably could have brute forced our way to that by just doing the next option because that was probably next on our list anyway. But I'm glad that I figured it out and Absolutely. proved it first. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, I was sitting here writing out all of the letters that weren't showing. <laughs> that seems much, much more confusing. Yeah, it that wasn't would helpful. Be hard to keep track of. Yeah. Oh, really? Really? Was it? No, so, wait, uh, so the lights are on now. Yes the the on air as it flips on the overhead lights turn on as well and now you have good visible light. Excellent. Brilliant. Do we want to grab our our paper? I'm I'm misreading. And uh, I I won't be misreading. I'll re- be reading it correctly. Could we uh, open up that paper and have a look at our lines or what it says on the paper at least? You absolutely can open up VO lines. All right, so uh, for people, you can see these uh, in the show notes below. But yes, please read your lines in order directly into the microphone. Would you like to... These look like they're going to be a list of words that when you say them might become I, other phrases. I feel like a child is trying to bully me by saying the, by making me say these yeah, things. Yeah, you're right. And I'm going to say rude words about myself. Well, let's go one after the other. Would you like to start with number one? I have, maybe we're wrong. Ace, lip, puff, that, hung. I feel like you're deliberately doing it in a separated way, but I'll do the same. It said enunciate. Remember to enunciate. You need to know what you're saying. Gnome or missed her nigh sky. Okay, I know what that one is. No, we can't think about it but yet. But I wasn't thinking about it. It was you just there. You number three. Abe who beat rap. I'm just having fun with you having to sound edit this. High mass to puddle ooze her. And hype whoosh peep Holland to lock hers. Now, obviously, when these go together correctly, they'll say something. So what do you think the first one is? A A slip slip puff that hung. Oh, a slip of the tongue. tongue. A slip of the tongue is number one. So you hear RJ's voice over the loudspeaker say, Correct. Shut up. We're not doing this for you. We're not doing this for you. Um, (laughs) I got your number two. Number two. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Nice. No more Mr. Nice Guy. RJ, over the mic. Correct. All right. After this, I did indeed turn my brain off. I have no idea what's going on. Who beat rap? A booby trap. A booby trap. As you enunciate the line, you hear something click above you, and ah! suddenly you're showered in a bunch of garbage. Oh, it's no, slimy. It's, a booby trap. it's gross. It smells terrible, but it also feels somewhat familiar, and you can't <laughs> quite put your finger on this it. This is what we did to RJ in it's high gum. school. It's all the gum. It's all the gum. This is what we no, it's, it's not gum. You actually shake off a couple of rotten banana peels, and you have to pull out a few paper clips that fell down your shirt uh, and kick away a bunch of empty soda cans. Do you want to keep reading those lines? Hold on. Let's let's deliver. High <laughs> mass to puddle ooze. High high mass high mass. Yeah, to... I told you. I told you what we were doing here. What's you this? you you, you got to say it out loud though for the list. What is it? I don't have to say it out loud. I get a high mass to puddle ooze her. <laughs> Start from the end. Her ooze her <laughs> lose her to pud lose her. <laughs> Masterpud loser. You're very close. High mass, high mass to pud loser. I'm a loser, baby. You're so close. So why don't you kill me? What kind of loser? I'm a stupid loser. You hear RJ over the mic. Correct. 
<laughs> I don't know if that's true. It's okay. This is acting. Just because we carry job. Just because we carried RJ in uh, high school, by which I mean we dumped blood on him at prom. Oh. Um, doesn't mean he has to get back at us now. And what's the last one? I haven't figured it out yet, but hype whoosh. Peep Holland to lock hers. Okay, well, it sounds like I lockers. I would push people to people into lockers. No, I push. I push. I push people into people lockers and to lockers in, into lockers. I push people into lockers, and it all comes rushing back to you: the trash, the lockers. Back in school, you and RJ would get into fights, but they were pretty one-sided. You were a bully. And just as you have this sobering realization, the control room door swings open. RJ pushes past you and shouts, enjoy your studio sleepover, you jerk. You try to catch him, but you stereotypically slip on a banana peel. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Hold on, wait. Um... <laughs> Whoa. And then? It makes sense. Sorry, wait, that sound. Yeah. It sounds like this. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I, not the one I thought you were oh, going to hit my head. Oh, sorry. That's the sound of me slipping and falling. RJ says a passcode at the exterior door, too quiet for you to hear, and he's gone. It locks behind him. You're still stuck in here, but at least you have a better idea of why. That makes sense. I think we've earned this. We should stay here. Yeah. I think the real puzzle is the lessons we learned along the way. We, we, we stay the night. In the, we wake up in the morning and we see if he's let us out yet. Yeah, but then we realize it's a long weekend, don't we? Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> so yeah, so you you are now in a room in a little pile of garbage. Uh, there's still the, the control room door, which that's where RJ came from. There is still some sound paneling on the mm. walls. Well, luckily, I heard what that rubbish was. Um, paperclip? Paperclip. Can we use that, that to... Helpful. Pick a lock to get well, into the... Do we need to? Or can we just go in? Room. Yeah, can we go into the control panel room? It is still locked. Can okay. we use a paperclip to pick the lock? All You're bullies know how to pick locks. You pick the lock and it works. So now you can enter the control room. Well done. And I do. The control room is another smallish room, but much better lit. On this side of the glass, there's a computer and an entire audio mixing board with faders and a patch bay. There's also a couch against the back wall with a side table. Computers do intimidate me when I see them in an escape room. They can do a lot of things. So I'd rather go to the couch. It feels safer. The couch, of the options in this area, the couch is the simplest. Let's, let's go to the couch. You go to the couch. It's a sleek leather couch. Uh, can we dig through the couch and see if there's anything hidden within? Tucked in between the cushions is a clipboard with a paper on it labeled director's notes. Nice. Were there any director's notes or was someone perfect? There are are five notes on this. The first one says, This mix was a disgrace. I have some major tweaks you need to make before you send this to QC. Why were the sound effects quieter than the music? Please fix. SFX less than quaver. Less Very than... clear. You know, not a quaver, you fool. You do a... um, a, What's it called? When oh, you locked, banded when quavers? You put, yeah. Yeah, you gotta have quavers. two of them. I did! Oh, well then, okay, say quavers. And this is bad. So I put a big X next to it. Alright, next one. Wallace should be two notches lower than the foley, always. Uh, who should be, what should be two notches lower than the foley? Walla. W-A-L-L-A. -L -L -A. Oh, this is, this is a room written by an audio engineer. <laughs> Walla. Oopsie. <laughs> Two notches. Do you have any idea of what Walla might be? That's just an Australian man who plays rugby, I think. Just sounds like Dang. Bloody Walla. Wow, you got it. Um, well, no, what is it, it Walla? It, has no, it does not have much bearing on the room, so I, I am happy to share a little bit of knowledge that Walla That's a phrase I've heard. Is, yes, Walla is the sound engineer term for dialogue that is too low to hear, like in the background. If you're in an airport and ah. there's just people talking in the background, that's oh. called Walla. Okay, it's the it's rhubarb. The rhubarb. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Um, two notches below what? Foley. Oh, no, that's the intentional foley. sounds. Foley is, yeah, that's like just normal sound. And that would be good. That would I would tick that off because that's good. That's good knowledge. I'll bet you. Like, Foley has been an answer at my big trivia competitions before, like knowing the origin of the word and stuff like that. 
Would not be surprised to see Walla come up. Foley is named after a dude. Axel Foley? Uh, yeah, Mr. Foley, the sound man. Okay. Something like that. <laughs> uh, I totally got it right, I think by there are the way. two more points. <laughs> uh, yep. Yep, we've still got more points. Next, it says, music should be at a different level than anything else. Lovely. Your top priority should be what is being spoken in the scene. Don't bring anything even within one notch of it. All right, I wrote spoken, I underlined it twice, and I drew a big smiley face. I think that's clear. I think I'll remember what I mean. Yeah, and I've taken good notes, so I'll help. Um, <laughs> okay, so those, the, there's no more instructions, right? That's the whole thing? That's the whole thing. All right, those are very helpful. They sound like they'll come into relevance when, it, when we're we looking at the mixer. soundboard, yeah. but not yet. We've still got a coffee table. Oh, yeah, is at. there anything on or under the table? The table's got a lamp, a bottle of throat spray, and two small colored cables, green and yellow. Are they just loose cables, or are they plugged into something? They're quarter-inch cables, or eight-inch eight, eight inch cables, I think, actually. So they're... Those are very cables. different measurements. <laughs> yeah. A quarter I, and eight? <laughs> one's really small, and one's quite gigantic. They're about an eighth of an inch apart, Bill. Don't, don't go saying there's a gigantic difference, okay? <laughs> <laughs> they're they're no. cables uh okay that sorry are... you went from a quarter to an eighth i thought you went from a quarter to eight inch and i went that's that's oh. a, that's a lot bigger <laughs> yeah that's what it sounded like oh, uh, anyway. i think i 32 who times cares? <laughs> they're, they're short cables so like they're they're smaller than what you might see plugged into a microphone and they're about the length of like a foot maybe so they're okay. pretty short so then are they less so they're less like a microphone cable and more like a headphones into yes, a Yes, they're more like a cable. headphone jack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, lovely. That is well longer than a foot. No, in terms of, in terms of their thickness. Oh, I see what you mean. I'm oh. just picturing like a uh, science class alligator clip. They do have and... that, yeah, or doing like a like oh. a uh, circuit board sort of, where you just have those short little exactly. lengths. Exactly. Yeah. Little baby cables. All right, good to know. The throat spray scares me. Yeah. Does the throat spray have anything written on it? Because there are multiple kinds of throat sprays. Some make your voice sound better and clearer. Some make you a raspy, evil monster. As yeah, I if understand we, it. If we peel off the piece of paper that says throat, does it say bear underneath? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's just a small white bottle with a spray cap, and it says on it, use for horse voice. Mm -hmm. Oh, use to get a horse voice. Mm, it's crafty, to, isn't that's, it? That's how they get you. It's not when you have a horse voice, it's to give you the horse voice. There are also, and Billy, I know I've told you this before, throat sprays for numbing your throat before you get an endoscope put down your throat. And they can taste gross. Mm. Not, <laughs> not my favorite throat spray. Well, let's go see if this computer is voice activated. That said, the only sprays that I've put in my oh, mouth no. are that one and sour spray. That's fair. Um, the, <laughs> sour spray is great. The, 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 the code when we leave will need, because he spoke the code. Yeah, yeah, it'll be a so voice it'll code. Be voice, it'll be voice pattern recognition. Yeah, we need a gruff voice. And we'll need to use this. So we'll put it in our inventory so 100%. that when we leave, we can spray our voice. Yep. Okay. Shall we head to the computer? I suppose that makes sense. The computer is on, and oh my gosh, it looks like it's been recording you this whole time. Oh, what? no. How embarrassing. Is RJ planning on blackmailing you? <laughs> Probably. Uh, you scramble to delete the recording, but the recording software is locked. There's an entry field to type a password. Ooh, have we seen anything resembling a password? No, but stage? maybe that's what we'll get out of the uh, the f mixing quality. Maybe we'll fix it all. Then it'll just be a person saying, Hello, now that you can hear me over the Walla, my password is Walla. Intriguing. That could work. I feel like this should be a big lesson to people that if you are a substantial bully in high school, then many years later, you'll be the sort of person that is concerned about someone putting footage of you saying, I'm a stupid loser out into the world. Mm, that's true. This is a didactic narrative. <laughs> there's, a, there's a moral here. Aren't they all, secretly? Yes, for sure. Let's head to the mixing board. All right. Can Let's get ready to mess around with yeah. this terrifying thing. This is why I, I, I've mentioned recently, this is something that I like about escape rooms, the chance to mess with things that I wouldn't dare touch in real life because I know I'd ruin them. <laughs> right. On the left, there's the faders, which are like slidey, slidey things. Good. 
Uh, and then on the right is a patch bay, which is just a fancy term for a bunch of holes for cables. Uh, oh. Would you like to look at the faders first? Um, sure. Makes sense. There are five sliding faders. Each one is labeled with a piece of tape underneath, and they're labeled as follows. SFX, mm. dial, D-I-A-L, all in caps. Okay. MX, Walla, and Foley. Oh no, I thought Foley was going to be SFX. <laughs> there are five notches that the individual faders can be set to. Okay, so we know stuff about Foley and we know Walla. One of these will be music. Is that MX? I would assume Musics. so. Music. Cool. Um, What's dial, dialogue. Oh, dialogue. And then sound effects, which I don't think we've had really a reference to sound effects. Oh no, we have sound effects have to be less than the music. No, no they have to be more shouldn't than have the been less than the music. Um, we've heard plenty of sound effects in this room. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, we know that dialogue has to be our top priority. It has to be at least two notches above everything. So we might as well Let's crank it, crank to, five. it to five and see. Uh, and so now then... three is our max for anything else. Yep, yep, yep. Walla has to be two notches, notches less than Foley. Yeah. Which means to make space for that, it's Walla's got to be one. one. Foley's, Foley's got to be three. three. And then all we need to have is that music has to be unique. Has to be unique, so it's two. The uh, and uh, sound effects is one. No, no SFX is, has to be more. Has to be three. All right. And I believe three five two one three from left to right Sentence is correct to that. for those director's notes. A small green tinted screen above the faders on the console flashes a new message: "Check under couch." Ooh. No. We check under the couch. <laughs> you look under the couch. Like old bullies, he gave it quickly. Of, <laughs> it takes a little bit of effort, but you find a small cable. What color is this one? This one is a red cable. Have Lovely. And so, yes, assuming it matches the green and the yellow. I have. We have messed around with red, green, yellow cables before. I play video games. I played video games since the 90s. Well, why don't we have a look at the breadboard? Do you then? cut them? Do you cut the red one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Can we have a look at the um the the patching? I just the plug them fumblily into the back of my TV until sound works. Yeah, exactly. We'll just see what happens. Yes, the patch bay is a three by eight rectangle of circular holes where you assume cables can be plugged in. You can open the image VO patch. Nice. Lovely. All right, and for people at home, you can also still see this image. Uh, but we are looking at it, and it's pretty much exactly what was described. I went out of my way to draw this 3 by 8 grid, and I drew it at the wrong orientation. You drew it the wrong way. You did a... Uh, this is upsetting. Uh, so this is okay, ABC... Our cables are right there. That's nice. ABC vertically, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 horizontally. Mm. All right. Um. Yeah, have we seen any indicators of what we want with that? I don't know if we have. In an A, a B, and a C anywhere? Or are we just going to assume that, like, Ooh. red, yellow, green, one of them is going to be A? Well, well I, mean... I wonder, one thing that we haven't looked at yet oh. is in the main room, all oh. of the foam panelling on the back, on the north wall. Was and I wonder if they'll end up being in a three by eight grid of similar nature. And maybe perhaps if we strip them away, we'll find clues as to how to do this. Outrageous. Can we go back to that main room and look at those panels? You can. Uh... These ones don't pull off the wall, but they're hung by wires, kind of like picture frames. So they're oh. easily flipped, but not easily removed. Can that we... is close enough, and, and honestly, makes me feel better. And are they in a 3x8 grid, or an 8x3 grid? That, coincidentally, just happens to be true. You can open VO squares. All right, let's open VO squares. Oh, no. Okay, so broken up on this 3 to 8 grid... And you can see this again. This is linked in the show notes for people who want to look at it themselves. But I uh, will try and describe it. How are we going to indicate as we read these out where there's a break to go to a new panel? Uh, I think in post, you're just going to have to add like, a weird <laughs> joltiness to I'm it. I'm not going to do that. Uh, so, Correct <laughs> job. Is, yeah. So it says, so basically, if we read them left to right, it says, great job with an exclamation mark. Now you just need to enter the control room and yell for help which is great fun, but it's broken up. So it's like G-R-E, 
A T job exclamation mark N O W U J St Ne Ed to N Ter the Con Troll Er Um and D Yell for He Oop It's pretty sus. So we could like connect so for example, because these match that patching board, if for example we wanted to create the word Green 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 oh. If we put the green yeah. hail from from A1. I thought we were just repenting all our sins, okay? A, A1. Greed, lust, envy, all of the sins of high school. Uh, can we take the green cable and place it in A1 and B4, which is the gr of great and the N of enter to make the word green? You do so. Great. All right. There is also red in uh, C one and B connecting to B two. We get the, the R from room, in room and, and the, the edge ed from in need. need to get red. Done. And then I see yell. That's got to be part of it. And I see ow. From so can now. we put in C five and A five the yellow using yell for help and the ow in now to get yellow. As you plug in the last cable, you hear a click underneath the That's mixing really board. Cool. I like that. It's a really fun puzzle. Under the Another mixing Another compartment board. has opened. Hey, hey. Okay. Inside is a note card with just five numbers written on it in red ink. Or, wait, actually it might not be red ink. Uh, go ahead and click on VO note. I can't remember what it actually looks like. Red. Uh, yes, so again, people, you can see this uh, image at home. Uh, but yeah, it's five numbers written in red ink. One five four one two, but also like a couple of underscores at the top, like we've got missing letters, that sort of thing. Yeah, like so blank, uh, blank, something space, blank, blank, blank. Yeah, so it's like yeah, a two, two blanks, letter word and a and three letter three word, perhaps. Which is, I mean, it's probably not fifteen four one two. Probably not. But also, I don't imagine we would be resetting the. Could we? Do you want to quickly reset the faders to one five four one two? See if they do anything different. Oh, you can give it a shot. Nothing happens. Cool. Okay. I wasn't sure, but they were all numbers one to five, so it might have happened. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, having them with a break there, like 15, 412 doesn't seem like it's meaningful. Not If we to broke my them up according to the, to the lines above them. Have we seen anything already broken up like that? Not to my knowledge, just as a quick recap of some things. So we're looking for a password for this computer. We've got throat spray. There yes. was a lamp. There was a lamp. We never did anything with the lamp. We did not do anything can with we the lamp. can we turn the lamp on slash off? Uh, nothing unusual happens. It functions like a lamp should. Oh, lamp if we sure. shine, if we put the this note near the lamp, does it? Is it technically? A, is it secretly a UV lamp? And it looks like notice. there's nothing special on this note. There's no hidden lettering on this note. Intriguing, intriguing wording there. I don't know what to make of it. But well, we do have <laughs> on air yeah. is in that pattern. Oh, that's true. So it's like, oh, wait, are these in, are these an order? No, they're not. But like one, five, four, one, two could be the first of on air, then the fifth of on air. So it's like, oh, oh that's interesting. R, I, O, N, Orion. That is something. We take the letters of on air indicated oh, by that God, doing two three so much better and we than did me them in today. the order of those, those numbers are, are you're referencing destroying on air. this. All right, so we have on air, uh, which is Orion. That sounds password. -y. Is that the password to the computer? Uh, you type it in, and good thing too because you actually notice underneath it says one attempt remaining. <laughs> Get out and of here! The software unlocks. Whew. Do you want to stop and delete the recording? No, we deserve it. Okay, cool, 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 cool. We can cool. let the recording go out there. All right. Well, now that you have access to the recording software, you notice a conspicuous text document that's Ooh. just labeled voice passcode. Ooh, and what is it? That's what does it say? Worth opening. Let's open it up. It just says C5, B6, B4, C4. C5, B6. Sorry, C5, B6, B4. C four. All right. Let's have a look at those. What Got, that would spell on the on the, the back chart. to the cut. The 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 yeah the soundproofing. C five is yell yell to unclog. 
<laughs> B6. The. Yell V. B4. N. C4. D. Yell the end. end. Okay. <clears throat> um, can we put some throat spray into our throat so we sound like RJ? You sprayed in and you don't know for sure that's going to happen, but that's exactly what happens. We uh, knew for sure. Your throat feels scratchy and your voice is raspy. And you kind of start talking like this a little bit. There are none of this stuff. All right. And then we go to the door and we say, the end. Voice recognized. Passcode recognized. And you escape voice over and over again. <laughs> you think to yourself, was that a strange prank? or vengeance. Either way, you feel like if you're going to break into the VO industry, maybe you have some apologizing to do first. Mm hmm. That's Congratulations! Fair. We we invented the name Rasping Jimmy, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. He, he never liked it. <laughs> he he never liked it. We're the worst bullies in the world! <laughs> Thank you for listening to Escape This Podcast. Don't forget to tune in next week for Podcast This Escape where we debrief with our guest and discuss the escape room that we just escaped from.